Hello students, myself Janil. Let us begin soil water video part 2. In previous video, we have understood what is soil water, what are the types of soil water like free water, hell water, structural water, etc. Then we have learned effective stress, total stress and neutral stress. Neutral stress is also known as pore water pressure. Now let us go into technical calculations. There are four cases to be considered according to soil water. Four cases are like this. Partly dry and partly saturated soil mass. So two parts are there which is first part partly dry and second part there is partly saturated soil mass. Second one is partly dry and partly saturated soil mass with surcharge. Third one there is submerged soil mass which is submerged. And fourth case there is saturated soil mass with capillary fringe that is capillary water inside the soil. We will see this. Let us start one by one. First case that is partly dry and partly saturated soil mass. So here the soil mass must be in two parts partly dry and partly saturated. Now you have to keep your attention here because these diagrams if you understand these diagrams this chapter is almost solved. Let us see this. Here you can see three lines A line, B B line and C C line. Here you can see two parts. The line B B is departing them in two parts. Upper portion of line B B that is dry soil and lower portion of line B B that is saturated soil. Here A A line is showing ground line. G L can be written here. G L that is ground line. And at line BB, water table is lying. You can see a inverted triangle here. That is showing water table. Now dry soil is having height H1. Saturated soil is having height H2. Now if we analyze it in terms of effective stress, total stress and neutral stress, it will be like this. These are pressure diagrams. Now at line AA, above line AA there is no pressure or there is no soil. So there is zero pressure. So in the first diagram of total stress you can see that there is zero stress. Right. Now if we go further up to line BB. So at level BB you can see a triangle here. This triangle is due to when you go from line A to line BB, the pressure will be increasing as you go downwards. That is why this is in triangular shape. Now at line BB, the dry soil is having some pressure and that pressure would be gamma D into H1. Gamma D is what? Unit weight of dry soil and H1 is height 1. Now, going downwards to that at line CC. At line CC, the same pressure gamma D H1 will be continued here. And furthermore, saturated soil will also exert some pressure at line CC. Now, water table is at line BB. So, here on saturated soil, somewhat poor water pressure will also be acting. So, I have to calculate this as saturated gamma saturated into height H2 for total stress. So gamma D H1 plus gamma saturated H2. If we see pore water pressure case. So up to the height of water table only pore water pressure will act above that. Above water table no pore water pressure will act because there is no water in the pores. That is why. Now, here if we see between line BB and CC, at line CC, at level CC, there will be some pore water pressure and it will be gamma W into height H2. Let us understand it with figures. At level BB, we can write sigma total stress at as gamma D into H1 U is 0. At level BB, we are talking about level BB only, so U may be 0 there and gamma dash that is sigma sorry sigma dash that is sigma minus u 
So deducting 0 from that, it will be sigma dash gamma d into h1. Talking about level cc. At level cc, sigma is gamma d into h1 plus gamma saturated into h2. We have just understood that. U will be at level cc somewhat and somewhat is gamma w into h2. So deducting sigma minus u, sigma dash effective stress is coming out as gamma d h1 plus gamma dash h2 where gamma dash is what? Submerged unit weight. So this is it for first case. Same way second case partly dry and partly saturated soil mass with surcharge. So in this case surcharge is extra. Basically surcharge is nothing but some extra weight on the soil that is surcharge. So here you can see same figure in the previous case but with some surcharge Q here. So this Q will exert some more pressure. There will be same uh, application but this Q will apply more pressure. Let us see that there is dry soil, saturated soil, water table at same height. Let us see total stress now. <clears throat> For total stress here one rectangle can be seen. That rectangle is due to surcharge Q because it is a uniform load. So it is uniformly distributed among the total depth of the soil. So this is a rectangle. After that the same figure can be seen. Let us understand that again. Here at level A, at level A, above level A, there can be zero pressure. Below level A, we can say at level BB, there will be pressure exerted by surcharge as well as dry soil. So at this level, we have to calculate surcharge plus dry soil weight that is gamma d into h1. So q gamma d into h1 and at level cc there will be addition of gamma saturated into h2 due to these soil weight and into height. Same way pore water pressure will act as same between bb to cc and it will be gamma w into h2 as it is in the previous case. Let us see it with figures. At level BB, sigma total stress will be gamma D into H1 plus Q. So in that case, surcharge is added and U is equal to 0. So sigma dash effective stress is equal to gamma D into H1 plus Q. And at level CC, the similar procedure will be followed as sigma total stress will be gamma d into h1 plus gamma saturated into h2 plus surcharge q and u will be not zero here u will be gamma w into h2 so sigma dash can be written as gamma d into h1 plus gamma dash h2 plus q so in both the cases surcharge is only added so that's it for this case these diagram sigma dash diagram can be drawn from total stress and pore water pressure diagrams. So we are not going into this. This is just a mathematical calculation. Moving forward to the third case, submerged soil mass. In submerged soil mass case, water is above the soil the ground line. Here you can see water table here, inverted triangle is here at line AA. So, H1 and H2 both height will be having some water and due to that let us see stress diagrams, pressure diagrams, sigma total stress at level BB, at level BB it will be due to water and H1. So it will be gamma W into H1 and at level CC saturated soil will also act so gamma saturated into height H2. So total stress is like this. U pore water pressure. Here water is in from line AA to CC. Thoroughly the water is there and pores must be there. So pore fluid will act some pressure on that. So at level BB also there will be some pore water pressure and that will be gamma W into H2. Sorry gamma W into H1 and below that it will be gamma W into H2 for pore water pressure. Now let us see it technically at level BB. 
total stress that is gamma w into h1 at level b we write and u is will not be zero u will be gamma w into h1 so deducting gamma w h1 minus gamma w h1 it will be zero pressure effective pressure will be zero because the pressure which was there it was only exerted due to water in the second case at level cc sigma total stress is given by gamma w into h1 plus gamma saturated into h2 u can be written as gamma w h1 plus gamma w into h2 because h1 and h2 both height will exert pore water pressure and deducting it from total stress it is giving sigma dash as gamma saturated h2 minus gamma w h2 hence it becomes gamma dash into h2 gamma dash is submerged unit weight let us talk about fourth case which is saturated soil mass with capillary fringe so capillary fringe means the fringes done by capillary water so in this case line a is ground line line bb is ground water table line here you can see inverted water table water inverted triangles right so there is a water table and h2 height is having saturated soil let us see this here capillary fringe will somewhat act as a surcharge and it is having a triangle but due to unit weight of water so here at level bb you can understand that this fringe is acting and that is due to gamma w into h1 same way the pressure here by this soil is acting as saturated soil and that will be gamma saturated into h1 so this is almost clear and coming downwards at level cc the additional pressure will be gamma saturated into height h2 so it is quite simple now and for pore water pressure due to this fringe due to this capillary water insert insertion of this water there will be pore water pressure above line bb also and that can be given as gamma w into height h1 and saturated soil is under water table so it will act for water pressure as gamma w into h2 so that's it for total stress and for water pressure let us understand it technically at level bb total stress can be written as gamma saturated into h1 plus gamma w into h1 now deducting it with u u is given as gamma w into h1 so effective stress will be only due to saturated soil that is gamma saturated into h1 and at level cc there will be similar scenario sigma total stress will be gamma saturated into h1 plus gamma w into h1 plus gamma saturated into h2 now u will be gamma w h1 plus gamma w h2 and deducting u from total stress it is giving sigma dash as gamma saturated h1 plus gamma dash h2 so these are all four cases for you if you understand all these four cases no numerical will be hard for you let us understand and practice one numerical problem one in a 10 meter thick sand deposit so thickness of sand deposit is given ground water table lies at 4 meter depth below the ground line sand deposit has gamma d that is dry unit weight 18 kN per meter cube and saturated unit weight that is 20 kN per meter cube compute the effective stress values at depth 2 meter 4 meter and 6 meter below ground line so in these type of problems do one thing most priorly that is a figure you draw a figure and problem will be solved here you can see the thickness of the sand deposit as 10 meter but it is divided in two parts due to water table so water table is at 4 meter depth here you can see 4 meter and water table here now we need three things at 2 meter depth 4 meter depth and 6 meter depth stressed values and effective stress values so pore water pressure will act only below water table if you understand that the problem is solved already so pore water pressure will only act here 
in these two cases of 2 meter and 4 meter there will be no neutral stress or pore water pressure let us calculate that now at 2 meter depth you can see this pressure diagram dry soil will be there so sigma total stress can be written as gamma d into h h is here 2 meter so 18 into 2 that is 36 kilo newton per meter square u will be 0 here so sigma dash that is 36 kilo newton per meter square at 4 meter depth sigma will be gamma d into h2 h2 is here 4 meter so 18 into 4 that is 72 and u will be 0 again here so sigma dash will be 72 kilo newton per meter square and for 6 meter depth it is crucial do uh, careful here sigma that is gamma d into h that is 4 meter for dry soil only 4 meter is the height for saturated soil the other 2 meter height will be there so gamma d into h1 gamma saturated into h2 so sigma total stress become 112 kilo newton per meter square u will be acting up to height 2 meter only so gamma w into 2 meter so u becomes 19.62 and sigma dash effective stress is coming out as 92.38 kilo newton per meter square so that's it in this chapter soil water is quite easy if you understand diagrams so be careful there and thank you